Lorena Ober here. This video is going to be about how to have derma fillers so that they don't look fake. And this is really important because I primarily work on men and ladies of out of my age. Um, so over 40s. <clears throat> a little bit more for me. But, um, and at our age, there's a lot of mistakes that I see women doing all the time that actually not only makes them look fake, but is aging them. These mistakes are made also by the younger generation. But of course, um, when a person is over 40, we want to stay within the bounds of dignity. Um, we, we, we want to be not only do we want to be dignified, we want to be classy. And this doesn't mean that we're letting ourselves go. I mean, I am the last person that's aging gracefully around here. But I feel that I need to be a bit of an example for the kind of work that we achieve in, in my clinics. So, um, I have seven tips of that, or, seven, or rather seven common mistakes that people make when they go to clinics to have derma fillers done. So the first one, we're going to talk about lips. When we age, our lips lo lose volume. So one of the things that's very important to have done is lip filler. Lip filler is going to give you back a little bit of the volume that you had when you were younger. Also, it's going to give you back your cupid's bow and all of these things are are youthful. The mistake I see all the time, and this is a celebrity train more than anything, is having both young girls and older ladies go and have lip filler. If you come to me with already three mil of lip in your in your lips and you want me to put more, I will turn you away. I don't want my signature on that. It's not pretty. It doesn't look good. It doesn't look for anybody. I don't care your age, but it certainly doesn't look good for someone over 40. In fact, it ages you. You will look older if you have fake big lips. It's lips are not a trend. What you want to do is you want to enhance what you have. In in ladies of our age, what you want to do is you want to have the lips that you had when you were younger. Maybe a little bit of enhancement, and by little I mean between 20 and 30 percent tops. I have worked in young girls that have absolutely no lips, and I do work on them and give them a little, a, a little bit, but within the realms of dignity. Not only is it not pretty, but it's also not attractive. Um, I, I have a lot of male friends because of my previous career, and not one of them has ever come up to me and said, oh, you know, I love those big lips full of lip filler. That's so attractive. So if you're doing this because you think men think it's attractive, please don't. First of all, you shouldn't be doing anything on your face or body to because someone else might find you attractive. This is about you. This is about self-worth. So, I don't care if you're young or older, big lips are not attractive, they look fake, and certainly if you're over 40, it's an absolute no-go. So the second thing is jawline. Um, I've been seeing a lot of pictures on Instagram of very prominent jawlines, especially in women. In fact, they, sometimes they change the facial shape. Whilst a jawline is nice to have, and it's nice to sometimes enhance your already existing jawline, it is not to give you a more chisel look. Women are doing this, it looks fake, it's obvious that it's not your jawline. And of course, once you're going into the fake arena, then there's all sorts of other implications. Um, when we grow older, our jawline is ex 
expected to soften. If you're feeling that, you, you, that you're getting jowls, which is the fat pockets in this area, I would actually suggest that before you put, you, you, um, put filler in your jawline, you go with fat dissolving injections. There's a couple on the market. There's, there, there's a brand that we do, uh, but there are a couple on the market and they kind of all work in the same way. Also, that is a permanent solution. So if you're doing the, jaw, or the fat dissolving injections in this area, you are going to need less filler. Your face is going to look more, more defined, more V-shaped, and therefore younger. Uh, so if you're losing your jawline, if you're getting the double chin, and you're getting these jowls that tend to go in this area, and kind of the fat kind of comes down, and we all get them. We all get them. There's not a, I, I've, I've seen supermodels that have this. Then go with um, the fat dissolving injections before you try to work on your jawline. Um, that, that's where you should be starting because the jawline fillers, they can look very, very fake. Um, and it's it just, it really is not a good look, especially once you are tipping on or the, the age of 40. Um, the third thing is changing your features. Yes, I'm guilty of this because I have a very, very weak hereditary chin. So I'm not going to lie to you. This is not my chin. I put filler in there. Um, and I do it myself. So I'm, I'm, I'm very, very brave. And actually, you, you know what? I do like the way it looks. Um, so there's nothing wrong with that. But if you start changing your features to the point where you're unrecognizable from the person you were before, it begins to look fake. In, and in some, in, in, in some cases I have seen, frankly stupid. Um, if you should be recognizable from the person you were when you started having procedures. One should never move out that far away. Um, I've seen people that have changed their jawline, they've changed their nose, they've changed their chin, they've changed their cheeks, to the point where really, I wouldn't, I, I, I don't recognize them. And you should be able to be recognized by your friends or family, especially your children. You know, they might think they're not living with their mother anymore or their father. So, you know, be careful. If you, and if you have teenagers, they are brutal and they will come after you. So don't change your features. Be proud of yourself. Enhance what you have. But you should never be looking to change the way you look completely. My, the fifth point is over high cheekbones. And there is um, this trend and fashion of having super, super high cheekbones. And whilst cheek, I'm a huge fan of cheek fillers, it's probably one of the first things that I will do on someone. Because if you have a limited amount of budget, uh, you want something that's going to instantly take five years off. You want to have good cheeks. But there's a difference between having nice cheekbones and having something that, quite frankly, looks unnatural. And it's all down to the amount of filler that you have. A good practitioner should say to you, enough, I'm not putting anything anymore in there. Unfortunately, I see this done so much, and I always wonder who is injecting them. So don't, don't um, rely on your practitioner, especially if you're going to see someone new. Have a good idea of where, look, look at a picture from you when you were in your 20s, 30s. That's going to be the best gauge of where your cheekbones should be. Everyone needs cheekbones. I'm convinced of this. I love having nice cheekbones um, and it is the one thing that's gonna t really help you take years off your face um the fifth tip is if you're looking too perfect we all have flaws i'm actually guilty of this i was waiting in line at a 
nightclub um, about two years ago and a man came up to me and he said to me, oh my God, you have the most perfect features. And at that point, I realized I'd overdone it. So I let the filler in my nose wear out um, and I did have a bit of jawline. I let that go and be because nobody is that perfect. Nobody is that symmetrical. You should never look for absolute symmetry uh, because nobody has it. Everyone sleeps on one side, they sleep on the other. No one has absolute symmetry. Um, and it looks weird if you do. So uh, when he said to me, oh my God, you have the most wonderful features. I know he was trying to compliment me and I'm like, okay, maybe I need to not do that. And, um, it's, it's important to have your, your facial flaws, to have your flaws. We are, it's our flaws, our perfect imperfections, what makes us unique. And you, you should embrace them. My sixth tip is don't try to look like a celebrity. Um, be unique. I cringe every time I get someone in here and say, oh, I want these lips or I want these brows or I want... Um, I want these cheekbones. It's very difficult to give you one aspect of someone's face because it might not suit your face. It's really important to stay within who you are and enhance. After 40, if you come to my clinic, I always ask for a picture of when you were 28, 30 because that's what I work towards. That's what we want to achieve. So if we're doing lips or we're doing cheek fillers, whatever it is that we're doing, what I'm trying to do is put back what time has taken away. And there's nothing, nothing wrong with that. But I cringe every time someone says to me, oh, I wanna look like, I want Angelina Joe lips, lips or um, I want, I'm, I'm not, I don't know unless they're wrong, but you know what I mean. You know what I'm saying. Uh, don't. Um, look like yourself. Look like a good version of yourself. My seventh tip is starting in the wrong place. So, something that I get all the time is I want my tear trough done under my eyes or my nasolabial lines. I always start with cheeks so, because a lot of times if I do cheeks, it's going to make the eyes look more rested. And again, it's about doing this with as little filler as possible. Nasolabial lines is very difficult to do unless I lift that with cheeks. By doing, giving you the cheekbones that you had when you were 30, your nasal avi lines will automatically lift, which means I need to use less filler in that area. It's really important to start, when, we, we're, when I'm rejuvenating somebody's face, to start from the top off. So I start by doing cheeks and, um, and also of this area, which we lose a lot of the fat pads comes into the cheeks, that lifts the nasal labial lines. A lot of times it lifts the jowls. Having said that, often what I'll do if the, someone's very jowly, I start with fat dissolving injections, which are brutal, but they're, they're permanent, which means that at that point I have less to lift and I need to compensate less to use less filler. Uh, remember, we need to start from the top up because then we are lifting and by the time we get to this area we're using less filler uh, because everything's kind of been been lifted which is what we had when we were younger so if you're going to start sort of like a full facial rejuvenation where you want to look to your your 50 and you want to look 40 you need we need to start from the top up uh, I very rarely, if someone comes to me and say, oh, I, I, you know, these really bother me, just stick filler in this area because you're going to look bottom heavy. It's just going to look, it's just going to look wrong. Uh, so you're better off saving the money starting from the top up. 
Uh, those are my seven tips of how to not look fake when using derma fillers. I'm sure you have loads more, so put them in the comments. Subscribe to my channel. I'm going to be doing these weekly. Um, just tips to stay within the bounds of dignity for um, ladies of a certain age like me. Uh, have a great day and I'll see you in the comments. Bye!